Hi. All of you know what the Lagrange's theorem says. The Lagrange's theorem states that if G is a finite group and H is a subgroup of G, then order of H divides order of G. We know that the converse of Lagrange's theorem is not true in general. That is, if G is a group of order n and K is a number which divides n, then G does not necessarily have a subgroup of order K. For example, consider the group A4, which is the set of all even permutations on four symbols. And the order of that group is 12. And 6 divides 12, but A4 does not have a subgroup of order 6. The Cauchy theorem and the Silo theorem provides a partial converse of Lagrange's theorem. In certain cases, this theorem guarantee a subgroup of specific order. Let us begin with a prime number P, which divides the order of the group. What about the existence of subgroup of order P in G? The Cauchy theorem guarantees this. In this session, we talk about Cauchy theorem. Let us see the statement of Cauchy theorem. If G is a finite group whose order is divisible by prime P, then G contains an element of order P. What does it mean? This means that P is a prime number which divides the order of the group, then G has an element of order P. Let that element be A, then the cyclic group generated by A is a subgroup of G of order P. So this states that if P is a device of the order of the group, then G has a subgroup of order P. Let us see the proof of this theorem. Let G be a group of order N and P divides N, where P is a prime number. So then, since P divides N, we can write N is equal to P times M for some M belongs to integer. We will show that G has an element of order P. So here we do the induction on M. When M is equal to 1, order of G is equal to P. Therefore, by Lagrange's theorem, every non-identity element of G is of order P. That means G has an element of order P. Therefore, the result is 2 for M is equal to 1. So let us assume M is greater than 1. We are going to consider two cases. One is G abelian and the other case is G is non-abelian. In the first case, let us assume that G is abelian. Take any element A in G. Let its order be K. And its A is not equal to identity. Therefore, the order of A is greater than 1. That means K is greater than 1. If P divides K, then k we can write it as p into r for some r belongs to integer. Therefore, order of a raised to r is equal to order of a upon gcd of order of a comma r. That's equal to p r upon r because k is equal to p r and which is equal to p. That means that a raised to r is an element of g of order p. So, if p divides k, then g has an element of order p. What happens if P does not divide K? So assume P does not divide K. Now consider the cyclic group H generated by A. Since G is abelian, H is a normal subgroup. So we consider the quotient group G mod H. Since P does not divide K and P divides G, implies 
what is the order of g mod h order of g mod h is equal to order of g upon order of h which is equal to order of g upon k and since p does not divide k and b p divides order of g implies p divides order of g mod h and note that order of g mod h is less than order of g therefore by induction assumption we can find an element bh in g mod h of order p so note that this b is in g let order of b is equal to r then b raised to r is equal to identity therefore bh raised to r is equal to b raised to r into h which is equal to h because b raised to r is equal to identity so order of bh is p and bh raised to r is equal to identity means p divides r so we can write r is equal to p into s for some s belongs to integer then order of b raised to s is equal to order of b upon gcd of order of b and s which is equal to r upon gcd of r and s but s divides r therefore gcd of r and s is s therefore order of b raised to s is equal to r by s and which is same as p therefore b raised to s is an element in g of order p thus we proved that when g is an abelian group and p is a prime which divides the order of the group then g has an element of order p let us consider the other case that is when g is non abelian in this case consider the action namely the action of g on itself via conjugation let us take one element x in g then the number of orbit of x we know that it is same as index of gx in g and here ox means the conjugacy class and gx means the centralized subgroup of x we know that if x is in center of g then the orbit contains only one element therefore the cardinality of o h is equal to 1 if h is in center of g and if h is not in center of g the cardinality of order of a, or orbit of x or o x is more than 1 therefore for x not in center of g the cardinality of x is index of g h and g which is same as order of g upon order of g h therefore order of g h is equal to order of g upon order of cardinality of o h and since cardinality of o h is greater than 1 order of g h is less than order of g so if p divides the order of g of h then by induction assumption as order of gh is less than order of g we can find an element of order p in gh and the same element will be an element in g of order p so if p divides order of gh g has an element of order p therefore we assume that p does not divide order of gh for all its not in center of g since p is prime and order of g is equal to index of gh and g into order of gh and p divides order of g and p does not divide order of gh we get p divides index of gh and g this is true for all x below not in center of g but the class equation says that order of g is equal to order of center of g plus summation i is equal to 1 to k index of gx i in g where each x i s are representatives from each non trivial orbits of or non trivial conjugacy class of g since p divides order of g and p divides index of gx i in g implies p must to divide order of center of g but you know that center of g is abelian 
Therefore, the first case, since P divides or order of sender of G, sender of G has an element of order P. So the same element is an element in G of order P also. This proves the Cauchy theorem. Now what does this Cauchy theorem say? This says that for each device a P of order of G, Cauchy theorem guarantee and a, an element A in G of order P. So if I take H is equal to the cyclic group generated by A, then G has a subgroup of order P. For example, let G be a group with order 2Q into 3 square into 5 raised to 4 into 7. So the Cauchy theorem says that G has at least one subgroup of order 2 because 2 is a prime which divides order of G. And G has at least one subgroup of order 3 because 3 is a prime which divides order of G. Also, G has at least one subgroup of order 5 because 5 is a prime which divides order of G. And, and also similarly, G has at least one subgroup of order 7. Now we will see one consequence of Cauchy theorem or one application of Cauchy theorem. So it says that if G is a P group, that means G is a group of order power of P. So let order of G is equal to P raised to L. Then G always has a normal subgroup of order P raised to K for each K less than or equal to L. What does it mean? This means that G has a normal subgroup of order P raised to 0. G has a normal subgroup of order P raised to 1. G has a normal subgroup of order P raised to 2 and so on. G has a normal subgroup of order P raised to 1. Let us see the proof of this application. Suppose G is a group of order P raised to 1. What we want to show is, for each k less than or equal to L, G has a subgroup of order P raised to K. We prove by induction on L. The base case is when L is equal to 1. When L is equal to 1, the order of G is equal to P. The only subgroups of G are, then, the identity element, Identity, the, the subgroup which contains only identity element and G itself. And both of them are normal in G. And their orders are P raised to 0 and P raised to 1. Therefore, if order of G is equal to P raised to 1, then G has a subgroup, in fact, normal subgroup of order P raised to 0 and P raised to 1. Therefore, the result is 2 for L is equal to 1. So let us assume that L is more than 1. Let G be a group with order P raised to L. Since G is a P group, the center of G is non-trivial. And therefore, the center of G contains more than one element. And by Lagrange's theorem, order of center of G divides order of the group and order of the group is P raised to L. Therefore, order of center of G will be P or P square or etc. or P raised to L. Therefore, P must divide order of center of G. So, by Cauchy theorem, center of G has an element of order P. Let that element be A. So, let K is equal to the cyclic subgroup of center of G generated by A. Then the order of K is P. And since K is a subgroup of center of G and center of G is abelian, we can say that K is a normal subgroup of G. So if K is less than or equal to L, then P raised to K minus 1 is less than or equal to P raised to L minus 1, which is equal to order of G mod K. Because order of G is P raised to L and order of K is equal to P, therefore order of G mod K is equal to P raised to L minus 1. Therefore, by induction assumption, G mod K 
has a normal subgroup H star of order P raised to K minus 1. Then by correspondence theorem, there exists a subgroup H of G containing K with H star is equal to H mod K. Since H star is normal in G mod K, we get H is normal in G. And also, H star is a group of order P raised to K minus 1. Therefore, P raised to K minus 1 is equal to order of H star, which is equal to order of H mod K, which is equal to order of H upon order of K, which is equal to order of H upon P, which implies that order of H is equal to P raised to K. Therefore, this H is a normal subgroup of G and its order is P raised to K and K is less than or equal to L. So this proves the, the consequence of a Cauchy theorem. That's all for the day. If you like, you subscribe my channel, Selby's Mass Capsule. Thank you.